So what's wrong with Navalny? He is against the war and anti-Putin, isn't he? That would be only partially correct. He is in fact anti-Putin very anti-Putin. But he's not so much anti-war or anti-imperialist. Navalny has long been presented to the Western audience as the solution for Russia, the future for Russia. And this week he's made countless headlines as one man fighting for democracy after a documentary that was made about him gained an Oscar. And the Oscar goes to... Navalny. <laughs> But despite that, who is Navalny really, and what kind of future does he envision for Russia? Let's examine that based on his past, shall we? Hi, my name is Yulian, you're watching FAQU, where we present you with factual information to counter popular propaganda points aimed at twisting your perception of worldwide affairs. Here's how. So who is Navalny? Alexei Navalny is a former lawyer who gained notoriety as the man Putin fears. He's looking to take over the throne from the rising Tsar. And how did he make that name for himself? Well, great marketing on behalf of his team. Navalny gained popularity by exposing corruptions and scandals in Putin's inner circle on his YouTube channel by making investigative videos. The channel has 6.38 million subscribers and serves as a platform to communicate with his followers. And by followers, I mean literally his followers. It's kind of like a cult. In the past, it served to call them up to protest. In the present, it serves as a communication device about what his condition is like in prison. And that's where we arrive at the interesting part. So how did he end up in prison? Navalny is no stranger to criminal cases being opened against him by the ruling elite of Russia. Comes as a rite of passage when you challenge the Tsar to the throne, huh? Throughout his political career, he's had multiple arrests that resulted in criminal prosecutions, but didn't go anywhere as far as putting him in jail. Or taming his activism, for instance. Until this one. August 2020. Navalny went on a scheduled trip to Tomsk to record one of his corruption exposés. In his own words from the documentary, the trip went incredibly smooth and no FSB agents, to his surprise, were lurking around. And here is why. On his flight back to Moscow from Tomsk, he collapsed in agony. And after that, the flight made emergency landing and he was taken to a hospital in Omsk. From there, he was later transported to Berlin for further care, but not until his wife made countless pleas online to Putin to release Navalny into better care. In Berlin, OPWC confirmed that Navalny was poisoned with Novichok, nerve agent, which is believed to be Putin's signature move in removing anyone he doesn't like. Then on September 7th, Navalny had come out from induced coma and stayed in Germany for a couple of months to get better. There, he embarked onto the making of the now Oscar-winning docu-investigation about his poisoning with Bellingcat. He confronted the man who was responsible for planning the poisoning for Putin and published the phone call online. Such actions prompted a large anti-Putin rhetoric and protests in Moscow and further spiked Navalny's popularity. Upon his return to Russia, he was arrested at the airport. His team subsequently released a documentary about Putin's personal corruption. And then more protests erupted in Moscow. Navalny was convicted to nine years in prison and became a sort of martyr for Russian democracy. Now that we've covered that he's anti-Putin and very beloved by Russians, why are the rest of the post-Soviet countries so skeptical? Well, let's start with the fact that he's a white supremacist who marched along neo-Nazis in Russia marches for four years straight. Take a look, here's an interview. <laughs> сторонникам, которые удивлены, я хочу сказать вещь, что удивляться не нужно. Я четвертый год подряд хожу на русский матч. Им стоит бояться! Им стоит бояться! Да!
Русские вперед! Русские вперед! Русские вперед! Совершенно нормальное и уместное. И ничего опасного в этом мероприятии я не вижу. No problem with it. He was actually asked about this in his documentary. The interviewer wanted to know if Navalny doesn't think that it looks bad on him that he's marching alongside people who are zigging. And he said, no. In a normal political climate, it would be strange. You are correct. But we're talking about the political climate of Russia. I consider my superpower to be able to talk to everyone and anyone. And those people are Russian citizens, and they should be able to vote. So, of course, I need their support. So, he doesn't think that these people should be in jail because they're neo-Nazis, but he wants them to vote. For him. These tendencies are further noticed in his tendency to use ethnic slurs to describe citizens of post-Soviet countries, minorities, and, of course, Ukrainians. He called Georgians rodents, and Ukrainians an ethnic slur hakols evidenced here. His imperialistic ambitions can be evidenced in these 2014 interview excerpts. There, he summarizes the annexation of Crimea as illegal but inevitable and deems Crimea to be Russian. The sandwich rhetoric was his response to whether he'd return Crimea to Ukraine had he been president. And you just heard what he had to say. In another interview from that same year, 2014, he deemed the idea of Crimea belonging to Ukraine as wrong, unjust, and frustrating. He then went on to say that Crimea was not gifted to Ukraine, no, no, it was given to Ukraine illegally by a fool. And that fool was Khrushchev. No mention of the fact that Russia couldn't take care of Crimea and Crimea was quite literally turning into a swamp and that's why Ukraine took it over because it was able to help it, but okay, it was an unjust illegal decision of a fool. Sure, sure. And then in 2014, in response to his chief of staff, Volkov, complaining about sanctions imposed on Russia, Navalny gloated about the annexation of Crimea. And here is his idea of supporting Ukrainians and being so anti-war. A mean girl style exchange with the same chief of staff making fun of Ukrainians for wanting our capital to be called Kyiv, not Kiev, because it's called Kyiv. And people like them are responsible for it being known as Kyiv to begin with. What a way to express support. His disrespect and complete disregard of the aggressive Russian invasion of Ukraine is further evidenced by his wife's speech at the Oscars. Millions of eyes watched her through the TV screen as she completely failed to mention her country's aggressive invasion of Ukraine, having the world stage to herself. And thank you to everybody here. My husband is in prison just for t telling the truth. My husband is in prison just for defending democracy. Uh, Alexei, I am dreaming the day when you will be free and our country will be free. Uh, stay strong, my love. Thank you. And here is Navalny on Twitter, just a couple of weeks ago in 2023, calling for the West to redirect funds that could be used for a one shot out of the javelin to defend Ukrainian lives from the Russian aggression, to his social media campaign to show millions of Russians an alternate view on the war in Ukraine, because they can't do it anywhere else other than Navalny's channel, so he could gain more supporters. So there you have it, being anti-Putin does not make you a good guy. It's kind of like if Mussolini was running against Hitler and everybody was cheering him on because he's not Hitler. The bar is so low. The examples I just gave you are just a drop in the sea of imperialistic, problematic, and racist rhetoric displayed by Navalny over the years. Yeah, he's changed his mind on Ukraine's sovereignty and borders recently in a post on Twitter amid outrage from the West about his beliefs and amid a documentary about him being nominated for the Oscar. So right now is the time where he could actually take over the throne. Of course, it's time to change the rhetoric. But can we really trust a guy with a track record of advocating for the exact opposite for more than a decade? You tell me. I hope this video made it a little more clear for you who Navalny really is. And if you enjoyed watching it or found it informative, please don't forget to give it a like, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, and turn on all of your notifications so you don't miss when the next one comes out. And as always, check your sources and don't fall for propaganda. And I will see you next time.
Oh, also let me know in the comments what other topics you're interested in me covering next. Thank you.